This is a look into the future with Google's Dream Fusion. What you see here are three-dimensional scenes, many of which are of singular objects, but a few more like an entire scene. Now, of course, in the video playing, they appear to be just videos, but they are not. These are actual 3D objects that you can interact with or import into some other application if you wanted. Immediately, things like video games and VR come to mind for use cases, but there are also avenues like simulators for more AI training, for example, because what we're actually looking at here is the ability to generate unlimited, unique 3D assets. One common issue with simulators for things like AI is assets for pedestrians, walls, roads, etc. everything. They're fairly limited, like usually less than 100 unique ones, and many AI wind up just simply overfitting to recognize those assets in particular. And this is just one example use case. Even just for enjoyment and immersion into video games and VR for humans, this would also be, I think, a very welcomed technology. And again, this is just one use case of being able to recreate or generate 3D scenes. So where does this come from? It's a recent paper out of Google called Dream Fusion, text to 3D using 2D diffusion. In the paper, the authors are using Imogen, which is Google's diffusion model. Notably, they are using the 64 by 64 pixel resolution based diffusion model instead of the larger variant. And this is due purely to the current processing time that's required uh, to do this. At least for me, locally, when using an implementation from Ashaki on GitHub uh, called Stable Dream Fusion, link in the description, of course, I found an RTX 8000 to take about 30 minutes per 3D representation. Going from 64 by 64 to something like, say, 512 by 512 or even larger might indeed be quite the nightmare on current power and performance, but if NVIDIA keeps tripling performance every couple of years, we probably won't struggle much longer to have even high fidelity, high quality assets. Someone will also probably likely find a better, cheaper to process technique to achieve this same outcome. But even so, the you know AAA type of budget for games and stuff like that, I think this is already pretty reasonable to generate high fidelity, unique uh, assets in this way. If you do wind up using the Stable Dream Fusion GitHub, do note that they are using Stable Diffusion rather than Imogen, since Stable Diffusion isn't actually open and available to use by the public model. And this is how I've shown the examples like this one where I'm actually interacting with 3D generations. Basically anything other than that first video and kind of the examples uh, that were shown on the uh, Dream Fusion website and in the paper, everything else is something that I've generated from stable dream fusion, which is a different backend model. Now, while there are obvious limitations here, I am personally just like blown away by this technology for the simple reason that these are 3D representations from a 2D diffusion model. And those 2D diffusion models can generate just about anything that you can dream of. And that is wild to me. So both in terms of what this means going forward into the future, but also for like the ingenuity here uh, to, to make this happen. The approach used is a NERF or Neural Radiance Fields variant. With NERF, essentially razor casts and pixels are generated one by one to recreate scenes from new and novel angles, combining them for what appears to be a 3D representation, but it's not quite that. Instead, it just allows you to move the camera position around and get a new representation. What Dream Fusion is aiming to actually do is create a real 3D model itself rather than just pixels that might represent that 3D model. Beyond this, and also of note, Nerf is only possible when you have many ground truth prior images at various camera angles to feed to the model. The original Nerf paper used amounts like 100 images, which isn't, a, you know, a ton, but it's also not nothing. Uh, and you can also, you can get away with less, but something like 25 images is considered to be very few. So you need something like 25 to 100 images of some object or scene at various angles. So then this means that not only do you need this object or scene to already exist and have physical access to it, you have to design that scene. You've got to take the photos, you've got to pre-process things and so on 
it's a fairly arduous task. What technology like Dream Fusion represents is the ability to just imagine in full 3D, similarly to how we can just imagine entire scenes and things that just simply don't even exist in 2D with the major diffusion models like Stable Diffusion and DALI. And that is the major difference between Dream Fusion and something like Nerf and why this is just so exciting and it just hugely impactful. It's possible that eventually we might have decently sized text to 3D datasets or something like that, but I think it will always be the case, at least for the next few probably decades, that we will have orders of magnitude more text to 2D image data than text to 3D data. So I think models like this are the near future for 3D generative models, but I also suspect and hope that we get techniques and or hardware that process this a little bit faster so we can do things even with higher fidelity comfortably. Now, what's even more wild is to think about how, you know, very recently, around exactly the same time as this work, Meta AI released Make a Video AI, which produces text to video in similarly as all these other things, unlimited and unique fashion. Now, Pause for a moment and consider that the almost inevitable future is there will be text to 3D VR-like video. That's coming. That's, there's no question of if, it's just only when. In the text to video models that we're already seeing, they're really just predicting the next frame based on input text and previous frames. There's no reason why these video models could not predict next frames based on other inputs also being included. So things like user actions. So it might be a combination of maybe there was a text input, but it could also just be previous frames and user actions. And now we are deep down the rabbit hole. <laughs> what will be possible in the next decade is truly staggering to me to really think about. Uh, I think that, again, I think the technology already exists right now to have text to video and or just video or, you know, user inputs to video. I mean, that already exists now. And we are really fast approaching the capability of having a sort of 3D simulator that really could be truly indiscernible from reality, yet also entirely unique and dynamic in its like possibility so, I mean, these are, this is like, it's not just like VR video game simulations. It's kind of is like, it's not really alternate reality, but, but it could sure feel that way. And that's, I don't know, that's, that's a tough one to, to, to grapple with given how fast things are advancing right now. I think it sounds so wild to have those words come out of my mouth, but at the same time, it's not crazy based on the technology and the way things are going and the rate at which things are going right now. Um, it's wild. So I guess it's no surprise that Meta, who is trying to lead the charge with his idea of the metaverse, is the one pushing the boundaries here with things like text to video and stuff like that. But Meta AI are not the only ones doing this. And similarly to there being an open source variant of Dream Fusion and an open source variant of DALI, there are open source variants of text to video being worked on right now. So let me know down below in the comments if you want me to cover one of those in the near, in the near future, because I probably will. For this Dream Fusion, you can play with the technology yourself with the previously mentioned stable Dream Fusion GitHub. A few things to note is it does appear, at least to me, that the overall quality of what you get from the output is, it's just inferior to the ones presented in the Dream Fusion paper. It's not really possible for me to know like how cherry picked were those examples in the Dream Fusion paper. So either way, this is these are like one of the very first attempts at this sort of process of doing text to 3D with, uh, with the basically background engine being a 2D diffusion model. So I think a few more attempts down the lines, we will probably see significant ironing out of many of the details, maybe get better results and probably also go faster. In the original Dream Fusion paper, they also seemed to enjoy using text prompts involving the use of the phrase DSLR photo of blank. And then they did this in various combinations like DSLR photo of a dog 
and then like zoomed out DSLR photo of a dog and wide angle DSLR photo of a dog. Since Stable Dream Fusion is using a different model in the back end, which is Stable Diffusion, instead of Imogen like the original paper, the best phrase, the best prompt to use is still likely unknown and just plain untested. I personally found that using the prompt phrasing of a rendering of uh, seemed to produce the best results, but this is just my super limited testing and there are probably better ones, honestly, for, for both of these models that are just yet undiscovered. As previously mentioned as well, generation time for each prompt was about 30 minutes on an RTX 8000, and this process seemed to want about 12 gigs of VRAM, but I'm not sure if it's doable on less and it was just using 12 because it was there. The main issues I encountered besides the kind of degraded uh, output that I kind of feel like there just is compared to the paper uh, was just outright and total failure, <laughs> where the generation was like a mere like cloud of nothingness, uh, or where the representation was multi-faced, which is termed the Giannis problem by the researchers at Google who came up with Dream Fusion. So uh, we'll see if there is a fix there, um, but I think that's actually an open-ended problem at the moment. Anyway, very cool research that I wanted to share with you all, and just an exciting time to be in this field. There are lots of advances still for me to cover, so Stay tuned for those. If you've ever wondered and wanted to know more about how neural networks actually work, including the optimization and fitment, rather than just simply calling some method, then you might be interested in checking out the Neural Networks From Scratch book by myself and Daniel Kukewa. The book can be had in the form of an ebook PDF, softcover, or hardcover, and we ship for free worldwide. Also, the physical books just come with an ebook copy. All copies are in full color, which helps because there's a lot of code syntax highlighting and lots of charts and diagrams to help convey the principles. Also, almost all of those charts and diagrams have QR codes and links that take you to animations to help further illustrate the concepts. This is truly a real neural networks from scratch, teaching everything from the forward pass, calculation of loss, backpropagation, and optimization. The only math that you're expected to know coming in is basic algebra. The rest is taught by us in the book, step by step. Everything is shown and explained in the book first logically, then mathematically, then via raw Python code, no third-party libraries, and then finally optimized via NumPy. And this is for every step of the way, building and training actual neural networks for a fully fundamental understanding of neural networks and how they work from scratch. If at any point you're lost or confused, all copies of the book also grant access to a Google Docs version of the book where you can ask your questions in line with the actual text itself. This is an incredible project that I'm extremely proud of to share with you all. We've sold over 13,000 copies to students all over the world. If you're looking to take your knowledge of deep learning to the next level, or if you're just looking to start that journey, I can't imagine a better way. So to learn more and buy yourself a copy, you can head to nnfs.io.